Hey laddies, how's it going man? My name is Fossey and this is Vampire. So yeah, I got uh, quite a busy uh, busy day um, because uh, today was the day when, uh, when Classic launched. So the new fresh server, North Day on Lights Hope. And basically I was playing for like six hours straight. <laughs> uh, it was really cool and now I'm back to Vampire here. So let's do this and in the evening uh, there is uh, Germany playing so this is quite a busy day, quite a busy day. But yeah. And yeah we need to talk to Lady Ashbury here. Uh, where is she? Can I go through here? I'm a bit lost. Here. Ah yeah. I remember, I remember, I remember. The door has been unlocked. Okay, okay. Not I remember. Right, all right. We turned Swansea, right? So we make him, made him a vampire. I mean, he liked it, but I guess it's it's really more evil than just killing him. And fuck the experience. Only 2,000 or whatever it was. Nothing big here. Yeah, but let's talk to Lady Ashbury. I guess she plays a major role in all of this. Uh, is she... He, no. I to go out. Yeah, I guess she really plays a major role. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if she was, if she is our maker. To be honest, I, I wouldn't really be surprised if she is our maker. Uh, if she plays with us somehow. I'm, let's say I'm 80%. Turn at a more convenient time. I'm 80% sure that she... So Harriet Jones became the original carrier when Edgar gave her vampire blood. I must tell Elizabeth. Yeah, uh, I'm 80 percent sure that she is hiding something, something major, something major. Fuck off, dude! You're Step not even away. worth my time. We have to stop it. Die, Fanny. Not even worth my time, dude. You're rats. You're some. You're some vermin. Fucking assholes. <laughs> All right. I mean, I'm level 45. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely overpowered right now. I'm so strong. But we are already here. So let's talk to Madam. Let's talk to Madam. I, I think she is, she's lying on, or at least she isn't telling us uh, the whole story here. Okay. Ah, I can loot. I can loot some stuff. What is this? A letter? A diary? Okay. 9th May. Tonight I went with mother visiting the sick of East of the East End. It had been a long time since I went in this sad part of town. To see her talking and listening to those poor people moved me beyond words. She really tries to make a difference and really tries to help these men and women. She also killed one of them tonight. It happened so quickly, I did not even notice she had vanished, but when she reappeared, she looked so much more alive, more vivid. I immediately knew what had just happened. She took her life, and I saw nothing. We returned home without a word. If I ever become like her, I won't feed on the dying. I will kill the guilty and the brutes, whatever they hide. 13th September. This afternoon, two men tried to corner me in a back alley while I was campaigning for the women's right to vote. I called for help as loud as I could, like mother told me. I don't know what would have happened if a soldier had not ordered them to leave me alone. He then walked me back home and tried to kiss me. I refused. He did not say a word and left. The whole story made me so sad I was still crying when mother woke me up after the night had come. I told her the whole truth and she held me against her chest. Then we went to the theater to see Doris Fletcher in her new play. I think I'm a little bit frustrated that mother did not rush out to make them all pay. If I were a vampire, I would not be that merciful. 15th September. We had a terrible argument with mother last night as she refused once again to turn me into an immortal. When I reminded her of what I had happened to me in that street with those two men and how things would have been different if I had been like her or if they had carried weapons, she simply smiled and told me that to be part of this world meant to be ready to face it. I'm not sure I understand what she means, but it drives me crazy. I left home in the middle of the night to see Emily at her house and I spent the whole day there. Maybe it's time for me to leave mother's house and live my life, just like Emily. I love mother so much, but it frustrates me so when she refused to talk about my conversion. 17th February. Tonight, I'm as sad as I'm excited, for I'm about to leave this house for good. 
Mother has agreed me to has agreed to let me have my own flat in the West End, as long as it's not too far from her house. I had to promise her I would be very careful. I told her how much I love her and she told me she was proud of me. I understand now that she only wants me to be as strong and independent as she is. I must admit I am very thankful for all she taught me through these years. She made the woman I am today. Now it is time for me to choose where to go from here. Whatever I'm going to do with my life, it's up to me. All I know is this, if I ever chose to become an immortal, I will not involve my mother in my choice. For this is my life and I'm responsible for my actions. I just remember, I mean, she is, she is immortal, right? What if I kill her? I mean, what if I kill the daughter of Lady Ashbury? The very woman I'm, I'm kind of in a romance with. Dude, this, what? This opens up a, a whole new, new sort of imagination here. What if I kill her? I mean, I definitely will, right? It's locked, all right. But uh, what does what will happen to Lady Ashbury then? I don't know if she finds out. I, I don't know. What good fortune brings you back to me, Jonathan? What is it, my dear? I'm afraid it's bad news, Elizabeth. The worst, actually. Please, speak up. Oh, yeah. Edgar is no longer in McCullum's grasp. I resolved that matter. Where is our good friend now? Is he well? Of a sort. His injuries were mortal. I had no choice but to make him one of us. To save him. Or to punish him. To punish him? I fail to understand. And what is the source of this cold tone in your voice? Edgar Swansea was responsible for the Skull epidemic, Elizabeth. It was he who unleashed the deadly scourge upon London. What? Are you certain? This is the most terrible accusation of all. He confessed everything to me. He sought to cure the disease, to exploit vampire blood to stop the epidemic. But he unwittingly gave birth to a catastrophe. All those poor victims. How could he do it? What happened? He was a criminal. He, yeah, no heed to ethics. Yes, yes. Or oh, he was stupid. Yeah, maybe he was stupid. Edgar's behavior was beyond lunacy. He had neither the discipline, knowledge, nor the proper facilities to conduct blood experiments. I must say, I'm shocked, Jonathan. Who would have thought it? And the poor patient. Let me guess. It was Harriet Jones, was it not? Yes. That explains how Doris Fletcher was infected and how she became an icor. She secretly visited her mother at Pembroke. Then we have no choice. We must act quickly, Jonathan. We must return to the sewers and put an end to the threat poor Harriet embodies. I have one more matter to discuss with you. Harriet Jones was the primary case, but... Do you know what a healthy carrier is? There is a tone in your voice that frightens me, Jonathan. What are you trying to say? It was your blood Edgar used for his experiment on Harriet Jones. What? No. No. This oh, can't be- Harriet is oh. her daughter. Elizabeth, are you all right? Uh, no, I have to go. What do you mean? Leave me alone. Save the city, Jonathan. Save what can be saved. Elizabeth, I need answers. Why did your blood Stay cause Stay away this? from me. Please. I swear I never was your Wait. enemy. Wait. No. Elizabeth. I see she's hiding something. Mm. It's interesting, right? So... Harriet Jones is kind of her progeny then. Hmm. What is this? The Blood Knight tragedy. Um. Only a few of us remain after the shock of the Great Hunt. I was one of them. I remember how the sudden attack of the enemy caught us all by surprise. Blood was shed during those few nights. Some of us who survived though choose to exile. I don't blame them, but I regret the lack of fortitude. For it is courage we need to protect the interests of the Empire. Courage we need to defend the values we stand for. May we all remember that William Marshall himself never lowered his hat? My beloved maker may be long gone, 
now, but his presence is still among us. We keep a few drops of his sacred blood to remind us what we are and what we seek. Honor, purity and excellence. I had the privilege of speaking with the knight many times as his progeny and as a friend. He spoke to me uh, of the tear of angels, the holy beverage supposed to appease the inextinguishable hunger we all feel that he never ceased to search, even without knowing if such artifact exists. I admired his tenacity, and it is his tenacity, this indefectible belief in something bigger than us, to make us survive any future great hunt launched by our enemies. Ascalon will be rebuilt, always for it is an ideal. Yeah. Very, very interesting stuff. So, um... The story quite thickens here. Um, we still cannot uh, open this door here at the uh, at the end. Whatever. Uh, let's go outside. I still want to do some investigations. Uh, West End is remaining here. It's the last thing I want to do. I don't know how much more of story will be left or uh, is left because. Hmm, I think after we're done with Harriet, pretty much... Now would be a good time to blend the recipe Marshall used when he fought the disaster. I think I know where to find what I need. Alright, uh, gather the ingredients, obtain it of William Marshall's blood from Lord Redgrave, uh, and then McCullum, and insulin in the old morgue of the Pembroke Hospital. Okay, I have s several new things here. I need to go to West End anyway, so let's do that first. For some more investigations, right? Um, let's see. Second part of your father's testament. Can I track this somehow and see where this might be? All right, all right. Let's do this here. Let's do the investigation stuff first, and also speak with uh, with Lord Redgrave, of course. Here, two birds, one stone. Can I talk to more of those guys here? But I guess I talked to those. I talked, right? Uh, he has a fatigue. Let me heal him. We meet Dr. Reed. We must both be nocturnal animals, you and I. After your captivity, I thought you'd be more cautious. Breathing the cold night air helps calm my mind, sir. I've had the most frightening nightmares since I escaped that filthy jail. Huh? May I ask you what you do for a living, Mr. Kimura? I am... I was... a landlord. A wealthy one. And... not a very kind one, I realized recently. Why this sudden epiphany? Is it because of your near-death experience? I was already feeling nostalgic about Weymouth, my hometown. With recent events, I'm thinking about going back there. How is the situation in the West End? I've heard rumors about armed men patrolling and fighting infected citizens in these very streets. I was lucky they didn't shoot me when I was abducted. Okay, personal questions. Why are you so nostalgic for your hometown, Tadao? I was focused so much on making money, I almost forgot that my relatives and friends are threatened by this epidemic. Have you heard anything from your family? I was not only a bad landlord, I was also a bad husband. I've not seen my wife and son for years. Busy, busy, busy. At least now you're ready to go back and see them. But don't be surprised if your son bears a grudge, sir. You make it sound like you suffered from an absent father yourself, Dr. Reed. Well, I'll keep your warning in mind. Yeah, I guess it's better late than ever. Have you no friends at all? Over the years, I'm afraid my greed turned me into my friend's adversary, while I became friends with my professional rivals. Those you grew up with didn't share your views on money and success. Would you believe I was once a member of poetry circles and an astronomy club? <laughs> we were young, such joyful dreamers then. But I stopped laughing long ago. What can you tell me about your abduction? If you really want to know, I was locked in that building for three or four days. My jailer was insane, mumbling about sacrifice and voices. And why didn't he sacrifice you? That was the weirdest part. 
He claimed to spill blood was not enough. It had to be done when some stars were aligned. Which stars? That's the whole point. He wanted me to talk to him about some Red Queen configuration or constellation. I've never heard of such an astronomical term. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. His passion for astronomy. Yeah, one hint is missing. What did he say about voices? He constantly whined about the voice of his master, ordering him to do terrible things. He wanted to silence the voice by offering blood. My blood. Okay. Uh, we can... Wait, what? Can you change? And is it what you really want? If so, it must come from within, not without. I've seen what an altruistic gesture can do. Nothing forced you to save me, Dr. Reed, but you did. I will follow your example in these matters from now on. That's good. Uh, yes, follow my example, yeah. Follow my example, then. Find a complete stranger and help him or her the best you can. Then invite him or her to do the same. You know what? That's not a bad plan, actually. And I should start with my family, for they are almost strangers to me now. Um, what? Why is the hint failed? Oh my god. Do you need... Don't believe that I'm the kind of man... There is no... Yes. Goodbye. Okay. Uh, someone else... Unknown. So I didn't speak to him. But I don't want to speak to this guy right now. I want to do the investigation. Whose blood could be purer than that of William Marshall? Lord Redgrave will have to spare me. Will you die too in this war? Good evening, Miss Anne. And good evening. I think I can do some what do you do around here. What are you doing out here? You mean what do I do outside at night since I am a woman? Let me ask you a question. I Actually, mean, we, we already asked that. How are the locals reacting to your claims? People here can't wait for a wall to be built to isolate the West End from the rest of town. That's how progressive they are. If this happens, Emily and I will blow it up. Explosives are very dangerous, young lady. And who is this Emily? She is my best friend, and a suffragette, too. She was supposed to campaign with me tonight, but hasn't turned up. Have you any reason to be worried about her? Recently, Emily started to believe in... Well, she got interested in vampires. I'm afraid she might be in trouble. Let me guess. You spoke to her about us, didn't you? Despite your mother's warning. I think I should try to find your friend. Oh, that would be top-notch. I can tell you where she might have gone. You have my thanks, Dr. Reed. And please, don't tell my mother. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Why do you still hope to become a vampire in spite of your mother's refusal? It's the immortal aspect of vampires that interests me. The world won't improve unless women take charge. I'm convinced of that. You're obviously a clever woman with a good education and a brilliant future. But have you thought about the price you'd have to pay? The loneliness? The necessary masquerade? Is it not true of every high position? To change this world and make it a better place, one needs time on one's side. Your mother has refused to turn you into a vampire. Tell me more about it. Each time we argue, Mother expresses the same fear. She wants me to remain alive and full of joy, rather than become melancholy and immortal. She claims you can't have one without the other. It's pure selfishness. It's her choice, yeah. It's your mother's choice. As daughters and sons, we have to accept the decisions our parents make for us despite our own wishes. I love my mother and have accepted everything from her. Even that she named me Charlotte, when it was not my original name. Does it bother you? No. Whoever I was when I was born, I am now Charlotte Ashbury. It hurts as much as it makes me proud to know that's the name my mother will read on my tombstone. Mm. Your mother has walked this earth for much longer than you or I. She is wise, and we should not ignore her advice when we disagree with it. But why shouldn't I be allowed to forge my own experience? There can't be only one righteous way to deal with eternity. Well, I guess she's, uh, she's right. 
Tell me, Charlotte, how do you plan to achieve eternal life, since you've obviously given it a lot of thought? I won't give up. You have no idea how determined I am, sir. I may contract a deadly disease. I may throw myself under a carriage just to be saved by her sweet kiss. That's a disturbing answer, young lady. And the worst part of it is, I know you speak the truth. There are less dangerous ways, Doctor. Instead of throwing myself under a horse like Emily Davison, I could just throw myself into your arms. Uh, be very careful. Be careful what you wish for, young lady. I could gaze at you right now and then take you to a shady corner and have my way with you. And leave your carcass to the rats. You... you wouldn't dare. My mother would know. She'd never forgive you. How could she suspect me? Do you know how many vampires are lurking in the city tonight as we speak? Vampires with a worse sense of humor than mine. Oh, my God. For one second, I thought you actually... Excellent, Dr. Reed. Very convincing. So, yeah, I guess this opens up the question. Huh? If we, we kill her, what happens to her mother? Do you need... Indeed. Yes. Oh. My mom. Goodbye. She's been... Give her some, uh, some medicine. He's healthy. Wait a minute. Uh, she has a migraine. Louise Teasdale. Good evening, Miss Teasdale. How have you been since you returned home? Dr. Reed. Oh, Please, don't make Good. I found him, you know. Ah. My dad. Or what was left of him. I think my abductor intended to do the same thing to me. Uh, I don't want to talk to her right now. Let's just heal her. Do you need... I don't need your help. I have no... All right, then. Goodbye. Okay, uh, what about the uh, investigation? Don't yeah. let any strangers come into your house. Shut up, man. You're annoying me. Okay. Should be here in the park, right? Uh, where am I? Yeah. I guess there was mention of a, of a park in the letter. But what was it again? Find the second part. Yeah. What is this? Just a sewer beast, or what is this? Okay, he's strong. But not that strong. Not that strong. Nothing here. I guess, uh, again, I will just look, look for everything here, and we'll see each other in a minute. Alright, guys, I think I have it. So if you're here in the gazebo, uh, just go over this bridge here, and here on the on the left side, there is a, you see here, there's a small, small, whatever, small nook here, and then there is something glowing, I think this is, yes, I'll be read second letter, my dear son, this is my second letter for you, if you find this one, it means you probably have shown the first part to your sister Mary and to my dear Emmeline, I think it's a good, it's a good thing you don't keep yourself what you discover, but I leave that for you to decide. Do you remember our long walks in the park? Your mother taught you your alphabet under these trees. I hid so many wonderful treasures for you and Mary in this park. You were both so clever, so brilliant. I've always known you'd both become great people. I've always been proud of you. I was never able to conceal my pride when I was asked what you wanted to be. He'll be whatever he wants. Your mother was convinced you would be great an artist like her. You always like to read and write. I still keep your very first poem, like I keep Mary's first drawing. When you chose to follow medical studies, your mother was sagacious enough to cover her trepidations and her worries. Me? I was happy you did not become a dull banker like me. When you told us you wanted to pursue a career in medicine, to improve life for all without consideration of wealth, I knew we, as your parents, had taught you the most important lesson of all. To respect each and every soul for what they are, not what they have. If you want to know more, all you have to do is to remember which hospital you chose to apply for your first internship. I am as ever your loving father, Aubrey Reed. I had almost forgotten I applied for a position at Pembroke. Ah. That was so long ago. So, next destination would be Pembroke, but let's not do this now. Uh, Emily's house? Can we do this one here? Maybe? Ah, it's here. It's okay. It's in the vicinity. So, this is cool. Um, we uh, 
still need to go to Pembroke for the main quest, so we can do again two things at once. This is good. What? This, no! This is very good here. Um, what else? What else? So now we're gonna do the Emily is missing uh, investigation here. I'm on the right track. Uh, this thing is the antidote. Yeah, I need to talk to Redgrave. I can I can do that first. I can do this first, and then in the next episode we're gonna do the other side quests. I guess it's cool that we can do both things, right? Not only the side quest, but we can do some main missions as well here. Talking to some peeps here and whatever. Welcome back, Dr. Reed. Hello. Find Dreadgrave. Yeah, I guess he's uh, somewhere up there, right? Ah, Dawson. Hey, what up? Welcome back, my mortal peer. Let me look at you with my piercing new eyes. Good evening, Aloysius. How do you feel? Mr. Dawson to you. You may be my maker, and I thank you for that. But we must not forget etiquette. Forgive me, sir. You're forgiven, my dear doctor. And if you need anything, even the most expensive items, to help you in your mission, you just have to ask. I'll be glad to sell you some of the rarest goods I own. Oh! Let's see, I may man. I need equipment and some. Let's see here. Bullets, common handle parts. All right, these are quite good. Watery rich blood sample. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Let, let's do this. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Um. I guess I'll buy these ones from him. Uh, let's sell a few items. I guess I can sell weapons as well, right? So I don't need here these. Uh, these blood absorption thingies. I don't like that. Let's sell it. Don't need that right now. The firearms as well we don't need, right? So this one I don't need. Joe's semi-automatic pistols. What is this here? 158 damage. Two hand. No, they can... Don't need them. Let's see. What else is here? Uh, the good trigger part. Yeah, 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 yeah. And all right, I guess. Uh, I guess that's it then. Don't need the thing is right. Two thirty-five. Nah, no, 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 no. Sell, sell. Okay. Talk to him. Yes. Hmm. Nah, I don't want to talk to him right now. Goodbye. I want to talk to Redgrave first. Not do too much talking here in this episode. We all count on you now, Doctor. Uh, where where is Redgrave? Where is this asshole? Eh, <laughs> where where is he? Hmm. Thanks to you, we have a new powerful member, Dr. Reed. Lord Redgrave, he's here. I think I was never in this room, was I? Maybe I was. Ah, this is the room that leads into the cellar. Good evening, Lord Redgrave. Welcome, Lance Bearer. I've located the true origin of the epidemic. And I'm about to end it. Good. We've held out thus far. But the time has come to put an end to this crisis. Tell me, what do you need? The blood of William Marshall. The blood of William Marshall? Of my maker? Are you mad? This blood is the purest of all. My maker proffered it to me on the battlefield. I cannot hand it to you. This is his last hope. Stop this farce. Marshall never was your maker. I have no idea how you acquired his blood, but I need it now. I see. Well, in that case, given the gravity of the situation, I suppose I can spare you a drop. Thank you, my lord. Now go, Lance Bearer. 
Craft a legend to be sung to Ascalon recruits for the ages to come. Okay. Yeah, we got that. So I will end the session now. In the next episode, we will tackle the investigation stuff here in the West End. Mm. And uh, then we can move to... Uh, where is Joffrey McCallum? Let's see. Uh, we definitely need to move to Pembroke to do the main mission as well. So, yeah, I think we can do both. And, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you appreciate it. And we'll see each other in the next episode. Take care.